of shooting, we pick the most difficult set ever. Smoke, mirrors in every direction. Love it. Welcome to Twilight. You're listening to Another Bite of Twilight, a podcast where we look back on our obsession with the Twilight Saga and continue to freak out ten years later. Hi guys! Hello! Happy Twilight Tuesday! I'm Kelly! I'm Mel! <laughs> and this is another Red Twilight. Thanks for tuning in! Thanks for tuning in. We're two <laughs> cousins. If you are just joining us for the first time, welcome. We talk about Twilight. What's, what's up? <laughs> we talk about Twilight every other Tuesday and we just pick different topics. Sometimes we read the books, sometimes we read, watch the movies. Sometimes we talk about the actors, sometimes we talk about, Just different. I don't know, one time we talked about feminism. Yeah, <laughs> twice we talked about feminism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, I hope you stick around. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning, um, good night, wherever you are. And if you're, whether you're just joining us for the first time or you are a loyal listener, this is actually, well, last Friday from the mm-hmm. time you're listening to this, if you're listening the day it comes out was our one year anniversary of the podcast. Insert audience clapping. <laughs> yeah, one year of another Bible Twilight. Wow. Can you believe that? Time flew by. Oh gosh. But at the same time, it feels like a year. It, yeah. <laughs> I believe it. I can't lie and say like, oh, it feels like we started three months ago. I can know. No, it feels like something we've been doing <laughs> yeah. our whole life, actually. It just made sense. Yeah, I know. So it's been a year of looking back 10 years later, so now it's 11 technically, and it's been a crazy journey. Yeah, I mean... It's been crazy, man. So we started this because there were like no other active Twilight podcasts that we knew of. Yeah. And we just wanted to, we had so much to say all these years later, so we wanted to give our two cents. Yeah, we would talk about it all the time. All the time, and it seems like one of those things that, like, oh, we'll get around (laughs) to, and then finally, we just did it. (laughs) I remember being, I don't don't know, I just remember being, like, at my apartment in college in the Mm -hmm. Fenway and talking about Twilight and being like, we should make a podcast about that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? That long ago. And I wrote, yeah, and I wrote down ideas in my notebook for it, but it took a while to get started, and actually... Maybe I'll cut this out if it doesn't actually sound awesome, but I think our audio sounds really great today. Yes. Thanks to B, B who we met at the festival. <laughs> yeah, she gave us some tips, and we took it took like twenty five minutes for us to figure <laughs> out <laughs> something that we could have figured out a while ago. Yeah, just how to have two mics at the same time. Yeah, we're not usually tech savvy, but we figured it out, mm-hmm. and so for. Finally, on our one-year anniversary, we have two separate mics recording. <laughs> yeah, we're stepping up our game, because before we did one. Remember, okay, guys, our first episodes were recorded on an iPhone. Yeah. If you listen to those ones, I love you. Thank you. Some of them are really bad. Yeah. There's one, I think the third one, it, we were both pretty hungover. Like, we also <laughs> didn't get... We didn't know that, like, you have to be energetic each time. I know, I know. We thought we could just say things and it would be fine. I know. We sounded so dead. It was so hot. It was a million degrees. (laughs) And there was this dog that I was watching that wouldn't stop breathing. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, panting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I've been meaning to go back and try to fix some of that audio. I don't even know if it's possible, but... um. Yeah. So, today we are starting to reread Breaking Dawn, the novel, which I don't think I have read since it came out. Yeah, I've actually only read this once before. I I have through the years, I would open it and read some of the sex scenes, (laughs) but I I wouldn't reread any of the other parts, so this will be my first time rereading that, I think. I think maybe I reread it once, but after... So today we're only going to talk about the first book, Bella, book one, as it's called. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to answer some questions that we got on Instagram. A while ago we asked, like, if we did a QA, and a what would you guys want to know? And so in honor of our one year, we're just going to reflect on the whole journey Mm -hmm. and answer those questions. Yeah. Behind the scenes questions. (laughs) 
So yeah. So should we get into it? Yes. So we asked you guys how you feel about Breaking Dawn. Mm-hmm. And you guys had some really interesting responses. So I'm just going to read some. Or do you want to open yours and we can like switch off? Sure. And this is on our Instagram, which is just another bite of Twilight. Yes. So I asked you guys how you feel about it, how you would rank Breaking Dawn in your list of favorites and least favorites. Mm -hmm. And Lindsay J said, it's probably my second fave behind Twilight because I love Bella as a vampire. Although the Renesmee subplot is dumb, (laughs) it's cool seeing Bella finally being able to keep up with Edward. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Nball1997 said, one, Twilight, two, Breaking Dawn, three, Eclipse, four, New Moon. So Mm -hmm. Breaking Dawn is second favorite. Greenhouse Rider said, my least favorite for sure. <laughs> Liz Groges said, New Moon is first favorite and Breaking Dawn is second. Interesting. Emma Hardy said, it's my third favorite, New Moon obviously being last. <laughs> I think having Renesmee wasn't right for Edward and Belle. The struggle with balancing the relationship over so much for so long, and I know this sounds bad, I think that Renesmee takes them, takes them away from finally having a relationship just about the two of them. I think the whole point of having a mate is having an eternal partner in the vampire world, not reproducing, if that makes sense. Totally makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. I just think that after everything they've been through, they deserve some peace and quiet together. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but it's just my opinion. I also don't like breaking down because of the whole Jacob and Prince on an infant whose mother he had a thing for <laughs> ordeal. It's absolutely disgusting. And I really hope they don't make a Renesmee and Jacob spinoff type. Whoops, that was long. No, I love it. And then someone responded, Jen C. Marr, and said... Renesmee is cute and all, but exactly what you said. And then Emma Hardy was like, thank you. So glad someone agrees, Mm -hmm. which is cute. I like that they're having a back and forth conversation on our picture. Um, Um, Also, I think that's cute that Emma was like, I know it's bad, but girl, you can think whatever you want. Yeah, this is a safe (laughs) space. Controversial, or yeah, controversial opinions. Totally. Yeah, love I'm the them. one that loves Carlisle and Bella. Yeah, actually, spoiler: I hate Renes. <laughs> well, we knew that. <laughs> Cindy Third Two Point said, "The thing is, Renesmee was always a thing in Meyer's mind, even when she wrote New Moon and Eclipse. Basically, the original sequel to Twilight was called Forever Dawn, which plays out the exact same way as Breaking Dawn, except." This takes place after the events of the first Twilight book after Bella's graduated. Jacob and the werewolves are introduced into the book as minor characters in which Jacob imprints on Renesmee a few months after she's born before getting killed sometime later in the book. Laurent is a good guy and ends up siding with the Collins in their defense. Oh wait, so Laurent gets killed. Mm -hmm. Is a good guy and ends up siding with the Collins in their defense against the Volturi as he's now being banging arena full time <laughs> victoria is the one that takes arena's role in breaking dawn as the one that sells the columns out to the volturi this time Whoa. for revenge against james and bella becomes some sort of superhero or vigilante at the end that's kind of cool yeah so really what's kind of scary is that Meyer al- always wanted jacob to imprint on renez <laughs> yeah it wasn't like an impulsive <laughs> decision that she made as a mistake like, yes we're going to have him in print on this baby. But I'm glad that we got four books because I love the series and I'm not saying mm-hmm. I want it to be shorter, but that actually sounds really cool. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little more concise, like having Victoria be the one to tell the Volturi and I don't know. But also it would be kind of weird if we never even met the Volturi before. So I think it's good New Moon happened. I'm happy how everything happened, yeah. Anyway, the OD... Barbs or Theo D. Barbs, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that, but said, It's my favorite, especially Jacob's part. Interesting. Under the Bridge said, Ten years ago it was my favorite, then Twilight Eclipse and Moon, but now I'm not so sure. I should reread them. Yeah, I should say that actually when I first read it, I it was before I, before eighth grade. It had just come out. I actually went to the release of the book. Did you go to that? No. No. It was a, it was at Borders and I loved Breaking Dawn when I first yeah. read it. Oh, me too. I was like, oh my god, this is my favorite. I think I knew yeah. because I received Eclipse and Breaking Dawn both for Christmas. Yeah. The Christmas after the first Twilight movie came out. 
and because after I saw that first movie, that's when it really solidified for me that, like, okay, I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. And I read Eclipse in, like, two days. Like, I read it just nonstop. But Breaking Dawn took me, I remember, a week to read. Granted, it is thicker, and I think Mm -hmm. I went back to school. Mm -hmm. But I do remember at the time thinking I did not enjoy Breaking Dawn as much as I enjoyed Eclipse. Interesting. I loved Breaking Dawn at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I was just so happy that (laughs) Bella and Edward were fine. I was going to say Rob and Chris now. (laughs) I was so happy that they were having sex finally (laughs) as middle schoolers. So into that. Yeah. Um, I have a lot to say about that. (laughs) Oh, Visions of Chalamet Sha- commented. I love that username, man. It's like Visions of Gideon. Song from Call Me By Your Name. But it's Visions of Chalamet, Timothy Chalamet. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, they said, it's definitely my least favorite. I even liked the Brie Tanner book more. <laughs> <laughs> the story is just way too chaotic for me. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Meyer also managed to find an unsatisfying ending for almost every character except the Collins, which just hurts. As, as I am not only Team Edward, but also deeply care about Jacob and others out of the wolf pack, it was a really slap in the face mm-hmm. to have this whole imprinting storyline. Jacob deserved to get out of Bella's life and to finally start his own. It would have shown a certain kind of growth to Bella's character as well to finally let, finally let him go. But I just in general also highly disliked the whole pregnancy storyline and how Renette's me kind of quote, replaced Edward is one of the most important things in Bella's life. I just don't know why we are supposed to care so much for this creepy (laughs) demon child. Just a very unstructured and messy story that ruined what good of potential Twilight showed in the first Mm -hmm. three books. I am still disappointed. Two likes. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny which ones get more likes than the others. Angel said, Breaking Dawn is my least favorite book in the series. Probably could have been higher if we had... A, actually got in a fight with losses to make the threat seem actually scary, and B, without the whole imprinting on a baby thing. <laughs> mm. That seems to be the general consensus that no one likes that. If you do like it, raise your hand. Some people definitely <laughs> do. Some people do. We yeah. get a lot of questions asking, is there going to be a Jacob Renesme spinoff? I think a lot of people actually do like it, so... Yeah. I'm not sure what the percentage is. Like, we'd need to do a poll of the entire fandom somehow. Some people do. I wonder about the people commenting, like, if you guys listen to our podcast, so they know that we're more critical of Breaking mm-hmm. Dawn, so they feel more comfortable to say things that they maybe know are more of the popular opinion, at least yeah. in our minds. Pam Garman did say, books and movies are number one in my world. I feel a personal attachment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when I first read... Breaking Dawn and first saw Breaking Dawn, it oh. also said they were my favorite. Yeah. And when we went to the festival, we asked a lot of people what their favorites were, and actually, I think the most common answer yeah. we got was Breaking Dawn. Yeah, people at the festival loved Breaking Dawn, especially of the movies. I think mm-hmm. part two, people mm-hmm. really liked that. Yeah. But we're talking about the book today, people, yes. so let's not get ahead of ourselves, because they're definitely different. So should we get into it? Let's get into it! (laughs) First thing I want to say is, before we get into any words, just, you know, how, at least in the American print editions, um, on the inside, like the first page, there's always a picture with a title, and this Mm -hmm. one has a staircase. And I was like, what is that supposed to be? Like, whose staircase? I think it's supposed to be the Collins house, actually. Because later there's a part where it describes her walking down the stairs. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably, like, symbolic of a staircase to, like, heaven. Yeah. But, like, she's not dying, so this is, like, the staircase to her new life. True. The vampire. True, true. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It looks very fancy, though. Mm-hmm. I think the, one of the, I think New Moon, the inside is, like, Volterra. It has, like, an arch, oh, yeah. archway. One of but them's, then like I think snow. Yeah, and then one's, like, just trees. Mm-hmm. So this one's... Interesting indoors. Okay, that's overanalyzing. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so then you know you read the dedication thing, and then you see that it says book one Bella. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what you first thought when you saw that, when the book first came out? I think I probably jumped ahead and <laughs> looked to see what that meant and saw instantly that like some was in Jacob's point of view yeah. and then was pretty disappointed. Me too. I was. 
it's just odd because we've had three books in Bella's point mm-hmm. of view, and they've never been split into books before. And then for the last book to suddenly be split into books, in mm-hmm. quotes, it's weird. Yeah. It, like, I, what the? I don't know if I like breaking the structure like that, especially in the final yeah. book of the series. It's kind of odd. Yeah. Hmm. It sets this book apart immediately. Yeah, definitely. Um, I do think that the epilogue in Eclipse prepares us for Jacob's That's true. perspective. Mm. But there's this prologue or preface in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And it's all about how she loves this other thing more than her. And her love is so strong. Yeah. You could run from someone you feared. You could try to fight someone you hated. All my reactions were geared towards those kind of killers, the monsters, the enemies. When you love the one who was killing you, it left you no options. And so when you read that, you think instantly, like, oh, this is Edward. about Edward. Yeah. yeah. And, like, maybe it's connected to him turning you into a vampire. So, like, you're into it, you know? Yeah. But then later you find out there's a double meaning. Mm-hmm. No spoilers. <laughs> I don't remember how I felt reading this for the first time, yeah. but reading it for the second time, knowing that this is about Renesme, I was not here for it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you can think it's about Edward, mm-hmm. and it gives it sort of like this dangerous thing, but then, yeah, when you realize it's about Renesme, yeah. spoiler, her future daughter, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it just loses so the sexiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not sexy. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was supposed to be a sexy book. Yeah. <laughs> it's about a little girl, please. <laughs> it's about a little girl. <laughs> yeah. This book one has started, and the first chapter is called Engaged. Mm-hmm. So this is before the wedding, obviously. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have Bella, she has a new car, and she's freaking out that everyone's looking at her because it's a super expensive, super expensive, what is it? It's a Mercedes. Mercedes, yeah, that's like bulletproof. And And it's only sold in Europe. Or it's not even sold in Europe yet. Only in Asia, right? And, yeah, and now that we have been to Forks, I'm like, yeah, that would definitely stick oh, out. Oh, yeah. Insanely. <laughs> that would be weird. Everyone's staring at it. I said, I'm sad that the truck is gone. I know, it is sad. That's another mm-hmm. thing that sets Breaking Dawn apart. It's kind of like when TV shows are about teenagers in high school, and then mm-hmm. suddenly it's about college. It's just weird. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel the same. Or, like, what about, this might not mean anything to you. <laughs> But Hannah Montana, in, like, the fourth <laughs> season, her family randomly moved for no purpose. I don't know what the reason was. They just wanted a new set. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Where did they move? At just a completely different house. And so, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Sitcoms yeah, yeah. like that, you have, you know, one setting you're yeah. used to. And you can't just move the whole set. Like, it just seems so weird. It It'd is be like weird. if Friends or Seinfeld just had a new apartment and the old one yeah. was gone. You know, it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. That is weird. Very weird. I thought it was funny. <laughs> On page four, Bella... Is eating Pop-Tarts? Mentions Pop-Tarts again. Yeah. yeah. Her fave food. That was mentioned in, I don't know what it was, Eclipse or mm-hmm. Moon or Twilight. I don't remember yeah. which one anymore, but as I've said before, I used to be... I still like them, but I used to be a Pop-Tart fanatic, so... Yeah. I was actually never, like, super into them. That's I okay. I don't That's like normal. this crust side of it. <laughs> I like the crust. I always remove it. <laughs> <laughs> then, okay, what did you think of this? On page seven, she's talking about, so Edward, obviously Edward bought this fancy new car for her, and she's talking about how very, very convenient, too convenient, that my truck would wheeze its last wheeze just mm. at weeks after Edward and I had agreed to our lopsided compromise. So, what is that supposed to mean? Is it actually a coincidence, or did Edward, like, break her truck? <laughs> Uh, I interpreted, interpreted it that he broke her truck. <laughs> <laughs> or I wrote in my notes, tampered with it, slanty face. Yeah. I hope not. I mean, it was a very old truck. It was it a 1953 was... Chevy. Yeah, that is really old. It could have been just a coincidence. I hope Edward didn't do that. We should make a note to ask Stephanie Meyer if we ever meet her. <laughs> yeah. Edward. 
Come on, we're rooting for you. Don't be crazy. I hate when he does stuff like that. Yeah. Come yeah. on. You know, you know what people are going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's like, lose one point for Team Edward. Yeah, Team Jacob on. gains a point. Don't do this. It makes us look bad. Don't do this, Edward. <laughs> Don't do this that? here. I think it's in a clip. Oh. <laughs> Bella says something on page six that makes sense to me because mm-hmm. you know she's like really against getting married it's not her thing and she, but she and yeah that always made me think that like maybe she shouldn't be getting married or I don't know maybe this isn't the right decision for her but she says I just couldn't reconcile a staid respectable dull concept like husband with my concept of Edward it was like casting an archangel as an accountant. I couldn't <laughs> visualize him in any commonplace role. Actually, I think Stephanie Meyer's husband is an accountant. Right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. That, we said that in the Stephanie Meyer episode. Mm. Interesting. Stephanie. I think James is an accountant. Oh, is he really? No That's way. my YouTube crush. <laughs> no Spread way. Spread the word, guys. <laughs> That's kind of a diss at her husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like when she said that she's always played it safe and picked the Mike Newtons. Yeah. Does your husband know that? Yeah. That you always pick the quote Mike Newtons? <laughs> I wonder if Poncho has read the Twilight series. <laughs> he must have. Yeah. Could you imagine if you were like a super successful author and your husband never read yeah. the book? I feel like I would find someone like that. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you were like, don't read it, please don't read it. And yeah. your husband's so chill, he's like, okay. Yeah. But I feel like you would want them to still read it. Anyway. Yeah, even though you say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I remember that line actually. Makes sense. I feel like she even said that in New Moon, maybe, in the beginning, where it was just boyfriend wasn't, mm-hmm. like, an accurate word for Edward. It just seemed kind of silly mm-hmm. to call him that, because he's way more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> on page nine, I hate... I'm sorry, Team Jacob people, but I hate when, you know, she's thinking about her life, she's, she's doing well, and then she thinks of Jacob, and then she starts yeah. to feel down... And Jacob has run away, apparently, in wolf form. And no one knows who he is, but nobody... The tribe, you know, the wolves aren't really concerned because they know that he's safe. But Charlie doesn't know that and has put... <sighs> Charlie. I know, and Charlie's put signs everywhere that says, Have you seen this boy? And Bella says, like, when she sees these signs, it's a quote, a well-deserved slap in the face. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, it's not well-deserved. No. Again, why is Bella being so, like, self-deprecating? Yeah. And she seems to go backwards a lot. Because yeah. like, there are moments where she's like, okay, you're asking for too much. Like, I chose Edward. Mm-hmm. This is my life. Whatever. And then, like, why does she still feel guilty? <laughs> she's freaking engaged. They're getting married. She knows like, that tomorrow. she can't have it all. Like, I mean, just, like... All of us know, like, you have to make decisions in life, and decisions mm-hmm. in life, and sometimes people are gonna have to be hurt. And you can't be, you can't feel that guilty about it for this long because what else was she gonna do? She can't marry both of them. <laughs> well, I guess she could. <laughs> I feel like Edward would be fine with that, actually. Yeah, Edward would be fine with that. He's like, do whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever makes you happy. I you was... can have a life with Jacob, and I'll just peep through the window. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the. Festival Edward was like too. Yeah. Oh, we should talk about later. We should talk about what V said. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk, we have some follow ups about our last episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so funny that like V and B. Mm-hmm. V and B. Yeah. I was thinking that Billy must seem like such a dick compared to like to Charlie, how he's not concerned about his son. Yeah. Charlie must be like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. You don't even care. Yeah, and I think Billy's like, he's grown up he's now. Grown up. He's fine. Page 11, I wrote mm-hmm. that Seth is so mature that he's now friends with Edward. Well, yeah, that's cute. Yeah. They're adorable. They're so cute. Technically, in the future, they become like step laws mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. he's like Bella's yeah. step brother. Yeah, yeah step yeah, in laws. They talk on the phone, right? Is that what happens? No. What? When do they talk? Oh, yeah. Doesn't Bella call Seth? 
to ask about Jacob. And Seth says, tell Edward I say hi, Kay. Yeah. It's so cute. Sweet. Mm. Although I think it's weird that Bella says that inviting the Clearwaters was Edward's idea because aren't you guys family friends with the Clearwaters? <laughs> Isn't wasn't Charlie like best friends with Harry? Bella like, doesn't. I don't know why she doesn't have relationships. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't feel connections. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's a little out of it. Although I feel like that's almost like a lapse in all of the distance between the Clearwaters and. Bella is a lapse in Stephanie's. Yeah, it's almost like she forgot writing. Like I feel like, mm-hmm. yeah, when she's talking about the Clearwaters, like you would forget that Bella growing up, like she would go to the, she would go to Forks for the summer. She probably spent a lot of times with the Clearwaters, yeah. like at barbecues and stuff. She would have known who Seth and Leah were, like from yeah, years and years yeah, back. Yeah. Like, kids don't really forget that that much. No. Yeah, I don't know why she chose to write it that way. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I guess we have to ask her. So it kind of flashes back to when Edward and Bella told Charlie that they're engaged and Bella was really nervous and it is pretty intense reading it. Like Charlie comes in the room and he, he hangs up his gun or does he not actually end up hanging it up? Yeah. Bella says, wait till he hangs up his gun. <laughs> and uh, they tell him and he goes, you're pregnant. You're pregnant, aren't you? And it's just so awkward. And it's just another, like, weird nod to the future plot. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, It just makes me cringe reading that. Yeah. It would have been funny to see Billy Burke's delivery of it in the movie, though. I wish that that was at least a deleted scene. Yeah, I know. I wish we got that part. Them telling him. It's funny how Edward basically tells Charlie that the reason they want to get married is... Uh, sex. Yeah. Says, we're going to Dartmouth together in the fall, Charlie. And we reminded him, I'd like to do that well, the right way. It's how I was raised. He shrugged. <laughs> he shrugged. <laughs> it's how I was raised. I just want a bone in college. Yeah, that's basically what it means. Yeah. I'm going to do it the right way. Because we're going to sleep together. And then, yeah, and Bella's like, that kind of put him between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Like, what was he going to say? I want you to sin. But I feel like yeah. my parents would be like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, don't get married. <laughs> yeah, and then Charlie's like, ha, 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 ha. You have to tell Renee. I still think it's weird. My, I mean, my parents are still together, so I don't know. But my dad wouldn't be like, you have to tell Karen. He'd say mom. I don't know. What about your yeah, parents? Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> oh, my dad would never say you have to tell me. Or <laughs> yeah, he would say mom or your mom. Yeah, you have to tell your mom. Or yeah. my mom would my mom would be like you have to tell your dad. Yeah. Not tell David. Never. I mean, also I have a brother with the same name as my mm-hmm. dad, so my mom never refers to my dad as by his name. Mm-hmm. Even like to him sometimes <laughs> she'll say dad, which is kind of my parents do that too. It's yeah. weird to me. <laughs> My mom, I mean, my dad never does it, but my mom yeah. does it all the time. My mom does it too. Yeah. <laughs> my mom said, which this would be a habit like 24 years in the making or something, but mm-hmm. she said when I was little, I started calling them Dave and Karen. Oh, so they started calling each other mom and dad, so I would like copy them. Yeah, I don't know how kids learn that initially if they are an only child. I don't know. What do you mean? Like, if, like, obviously, your mm-hmm. younger sisters learned probably yeah. from you saying it, but yeah. how do they learn to call mom, mom, and dad, dad? I don't know. Yeah, I guess because parents are obsessed with it, and yeah, they're like, say mama, 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 say dad, yeah. <laughs> say it, say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what if they don't do that? <laughs> Please say it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, say Kelly. Yeah. Call me by my first name. Yeah. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, so Bella tells her mom, and her mom takes it strangely very well. I actually couldn't even picture Renee freaking out about this. I feel like she's just so... I know. You know, she's always throwing curveballs, like... Yeah. 
<laughs> Renee clearly smokes a lot of weed. <laughs> really, like... Clearly. <laughs> it's not in the text, but it's called reading between the lines. Yeah. Yeah. It's called that. But Renee has a good point, because Bella's worried that her mom's going to think she's going to make the same mistake her parents made, jumping into this at a young age, and Renee's like, you're not the same as me. Like, you, you're really certain of what you want. You really overthink things, and... She doesn't say it in those words, but mm -hmm. Bella wouldn't make a rash decision. And she says, like, you've never been a teenager. Yeah. And she says that Renee gets really into the wedding, and she's just always on the phone with Esme, which I actually couldn't really picture. Me neither. I could picture Esme getting along with anyone, but... What do they talk about? I, <laughs> I guess Renee's probably really extroverted, mm -hmm. so maybe it works. And Esme's just like, sure. I think it's weird on page 20. Alice is fitting Charlie for his tuxedo. Mm -hmm. And she accidentally pinches him. And doesn't break the skin. And Charlie says, I'm bleeding on it. And Alice says, you're fine. Didn't break the skin. Trust me. Which is funny. Because she would know if there was blood. But also, yeah. I feel like that wouldn't actually happen. Because Alice, being that she sees the future and... Vampires just have such strong reflexes, they would never accidentally poke someone with a needle. Yeah. How did that even happen? Yeah, that seems like such a human thing to do. But unless he just, like, jolted mm -hmm. so quickly that it happened or something. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I don't get why Charlie is acting so, like, Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> your daughter's wedding. Yeah. And grandpa. I know. So not interested. <laughs> Alice tells her to go into her happy place mm -hmm. while she's what trying the dress on. I think so. And she's just imagining her with Edward. We've seen Edward now in the flashback, but we haven't seen him in IRL. Yes, yes. <laughs> in real life, <laughs> which is similar to New Moon. How it's like the dream. You haven't really seen mm -hmm. him. You have seen him. But not really. Yeah. yeah. And then you see him in the parking lot, he's in the movie, and you're like, yeah. ah! <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of how it ends. She's just daydreaming about Edward. Edward. And then the second chapter is called Long Night. And I love the way this started, actually. It starts with dialogue, which I remember writing classes, I always tell mm -hmm. like not to do that. But the dialogue here is so strong that you just instantly know who it is. Yeah. And you don't really need that setting or that no, no, no. Um, context to figure it out. And that kind of speaks to how familiar you are with these characters. And it just starts with, I miss you already. I don't need to leave. I can stay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that's valid. Yeah, right? this is pretty hot. I wrote in my notes, starts out really sexy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was quiet for a long moment, just the thought of my heart hammering the broken rhythm of our ragged breathing and the whisper of our lips moving in synchronization. Mm -hmm. ah! Yeah, they're just making out. Very hot. And on page 25, it says, Edward's shirt was on the floor. And I wrote, what the? Why wasn't this in the movie? Yeah. You, like, never see him shirtless. Yeah. Missed opportunity. One thing about um, the beginning of all of these books in the series that I can't stand is how much explanation there is in synopsis for what happened before. I get it because oh, it's a young adult book. They always do that. Come on, who's just picking up Breaking Dawn with <laughs> no context of the earlier books? Maybe if they, they're reading it and totally, completely forgot what happened mm -hmm. in the other books and needs a reminder. I just... I think that's what they are they like. Like on page 24, she says, He couldn't see into my mind, the way he saw into everyone else's. Who knew why? Some strange glitch in the brain that made it immune to all the extraordinary and frightening things some immortals could do. Only my mind was immune. My body was still subject to vampires with abilities that worked in ways other than Edward's. Which I guess maybe is an explanation explanation for why Alice and Jasper's powers work on here. Although Jasper's power seems more in the mind as well. <laughs> Like it's not bodily, <laughs> but yeah, I just hate that. I because I feel like we're not dumb, you know. I know we know what happened. I know young adult books always do that. Mm -hmm. Edward's gonna have a bachelor party. 
Not really. He's just going hunting with his brothers. But um, I always wondered, like, why didn't Bella have a bachelorette party? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No one I guess even it's just not important to her. To yeah, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. And I thought it was crazy. On the bottom of page 25, it says... Wait, I said, gripping his shoulders and hugging myself close to him. I kicked one leg free and wrapped it around his waist. <laughs> practice makes perfect. Ah. That's the practice having sex. <laughs> She's funny. Yeah. She's cute. She's. I picture her kicking her leg out like so dramatically yeah. and like wrapping it around his waist. It's cute. I wish they did that in the movie. I know. That scene in the movie was not... I mean, I shouldn't spoil it, but it was awkward. <laughs> yeah. Plus one for Team Edward because, you know, Edward's like, you know, are you sure about this? The night before their wedding, and he says, just making sure I don't want you to do anything you're not sure about. Jacob would never, ever say that. No, he definitely wouldn't. And he asks, will you miss your friends? And she says, I'll miss them. And then she says, I'll miss my, or she says, I'll miss my friends too, especially Mike. Oh, Mike. How will I go on? <laughs> so sarcastically. And they wrote, poor Mike. Poor Mike. <laughs> it's a butt of every joke. And so then he says, Edward says, do you remember when we told Charlie we were getting married and he thought you were pregnant? And then he says, I just wish, well, I wish he'd been right. I was like, what? I didn't remember that. I did remember that, actually. Um, it's too much setup for the future plot. I know. More that, that, he says, more that there was some way he could have been right. That we had that kind of potential. I hate taking that away from you. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. How could you know that, Bella? Look at my mother. Look at my sister. It's not as easy as a sacrifice as you imagine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really setting it up for the rest of the book. Yeah. And he says, it's not right. I don't want you to make sacrifices for me. I want to give you things, not, th not take things away from you. I don't want to steal your future if I were human. And then that made me think of when, before I read Breaking Dawn, I thought oh, and expected yes! that Edward was actually going to become human in the end because I asked Kelly beforehand, Yeah. does Edward ever eat any food? Which he actually, he actually does eat in New Moon. Mm -hmm pizza but um she says yes he eats and breaking down food and she said it very slyly with a smile yeah <laughs> meaning at the wedding when he eats the cake yeah but so then that had me convinced that edward becomes a human which would have been an interesting alternate yeah. ending like maybe like when they have sex or something all of a sudden like it's <laughs> like uh yeah the beauty and the beast or some kind of crazy weird ritual spell mm -hmm. thing yeah. that they learn from somebody i don't yeah. know yeah <laughs> Yeah, I know. I I felt bad because I I think where were we? I don't know. I remember that conversation though. You were like, "Oh my gosh, he becomes a human." I was mad at you for spoiling. Yeah, you were it. like, "How could you spoil it?" And I didn't know how to react. I was just like, "I can't say." <laughs> Disappointing. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so. This is kind of jumping ahead, but on page twenty nine. It has the whole part where Emmett and ja um, yeah Emmett and Jasper jump up into the window, and they're talking to him and talking to Bella, and it's like word for word in the book as it is in the movie. Mm -hmm. I'll meet you at the altar. I'll be the one in white, and oh Jasper shows up. Don't worry, Bella. We'll get him home in plenty of time. I don't know what he says mm -hmm. in the movie, but I wrote the movie takes this scene too literally. Could have been cut. I don't know. I think it's just awkward in the movie. Yeah, this is one of the most awkward scenes in the movie. <laughs> Especially yeah. as a first scene. Yeah, having Emmett and Jasper just jump up in the window. Yeah. And they look too small for yeah. some reason. <laughs> it looks completely fake. Yeah, and say line for line the same as the book. I don't know. Oh, they look so small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. So then... Edward leaves for his bachelor party, and Bella's thinking about the guests and how the Den Denali clan will be there. And then she goes into this whole synopsis about <laughs> their backstory and about Laurent and how Arena doesn't want to go because she was in love with Laurent. And then the 
werewolves kill Laurent, and the werewolves are going to be there. Yeah. And then this whole thing about how they had a mother, but then the immortal child thing happened, and everything about mortal children, and like how Carlisle told her this story once. And <laughs> I just thought it was so weird. Like, I get that this is setting up for the future plot, mm-hmm. which is too obvious rereading it, first of all. But then, like, <laughs> if you're reading it for the first time, you'd be like, what the fuck? Why are you thinking about this before your wedding? It seems like the weirdest thing. Well, it's like stream of consciousness, kind of. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, I thought it was ki- kind of funny and on the nose where she's thinking about the Denali clan, how they're going to come to the wedding, and she says that was the big problem. Well, the big problem is the fact that they don't like the werewolves because mm-hmm. of the Laurent thing. She says that was the big problem, but there was a small problem too, my fragile self-esteem. I'd never seen Tanya before, but I was sure that meeting her wouldn't be a pleasant experience for my ego. Once upon a time, before I was born, probably, she'd made her play for Edward. Not that I blamed her or anyone else for wanting him. So she's jealous because she's Mm -hmm. into Edward, apparently. Um, Which I thought was just interesting that she acknowledged her fragile self-esteem, which is something we've known for a while. And I also thought it was funny that she said once upon a time, before I was born. So yeah, I guess it's supposed to be... Just her thoughts going from that to this to this mm-hmm. to that to that. But it is kind of weird. And I, yeah, when you're reading it for the first time, it's you're kind of just along for the ride. But yeah. now it's like, okay, this is too much foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's way too much explanation about mm-hmm. the immortal child. I, that's the part that really annoys mm-hmm. me is immortal child. Because we're taken to this scene... Yeah. The secondhand scene of when Carlisle is explaining this whole story to her, but we're not, there's no setting, there's no time, it's just a, a memory of it, and it just feels awkward, especially before we've even seen Carlisle, and mm-hmm. yeah. it doesn't feel rightly placed here. And then she has a scary dream about this child with blood red eyes like that kills all these it, people yeah. and it's interesting changing because i just remember from book to movie like that in the movie it's that she's at her wedding and then they're on top of a pile of mm. people people in her life but in this it's actually the kid the child that killed all of them and there's mm-hmm. like angela ben jessica mike they're all piled up dead mm-hmm. very disturbing but yeah i kind of like the movie one more Me too. it feels weird to bring a random child Child. yeah Yeah. into her dream i just hate how child heavy we are right now (laughs) yeah there's a lot we've already had you're pregnant and then we've had edward say i wish he was right yeah and then now we have yeah we had the preface come on yeah (laughs) okay that's four mentions of babies children yeah already it's like hmm yeah (laughs) i don't love it i don't okay chapter three is called Big Day. Yes, the wedding day. (laughs) The wedding day. (laughs) (laughs) I actually don't have many notes on this chapter. I didn't take many. I wrote that on page 39 it says Alice's hair isn't spiky as usual. So Mm -hmm. I guess the movie was actually paying close attention to the book, which I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. I thought they just made that decision on their own. But I feel like in the book, it's just a wedding yeah. look that she rocked. But in the movie, it's the whole the thing. Whole, yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be spiky still. <laughs> People. Oh, that was funny. So yeah, they're getting ready for the wedding. 46, Alice puts the garter on Bella. And this is really skipping ahead. Uh, I have the same part. Can I read it? Yeah. She says, while Charlie was out of the room, Alice hooked the garter out of my hands and then ducked under my skirt. I gasped and tottered as her cold hand caught my ankle. She yanked the garter into place. And a lot of people shit Bella and Alice <laughs> and think that this is really a lesbian story. Really? Or want it to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it like the yeah, lesbian yeah, yeah. renaissance and Twilight? So like this part, I was like, okay, this is pretty lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> she, she goes under, under her, her skirt. skirt. Yeah. <laughs> that is going pretty far. Yeah. <laughs> Music starting. Rosalie's playing the piano because apparently she's the second best musician. Didn't know that. And Alice is the, her only bridesmaid. Yeah. Which I thought was weird. Why did she do that? 
And it seems like Carlisle is Edward's best man. Did you catch that? <laughs> no, I actually didn't catch Since that. I was barely conscious that Carlisle stood by his side. Yeah, his what? dad is his best man. That's weird. If I was from Forks High School and saw that. <laughs> I feel like that's lame. Yeah, that's really lame. Edward has no friends. I don't think no one does. Yeah, but he, Emmett and Jasper. Why weren't they? They could have been in the wedding. I know. And Rosalie probably should have been in the wedding I too. know. Why couldn't she have let Angela be in it? Yeah. What the heck? Yeah, she really could have. And maybe she didn't want to, like, then have to let Jessica, Jessica be in She it. could have. Would yeah. that kill her? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, oh. Don't you hate how Jacob says, like, the best man is here? I hate like, that, yeah. <laughs> you're not the best man. First of all, you have to be asked. <laughs> I know. So presumptuous. Yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, so she's walking down the aisle. She says, don't let me fall, Dad, just like in the movie. And she walks down the stairs. I guess the wedding's in the house. Different from the movie. Yeah. It's inside the I house. I remember that, actually. But it's interesting because then by the time it ends, it's the sun has set, so then they can go outside. Mm. Very sneaky. So the vampires can go outside. Um, yeah, I want, it's interesting in the movie, they don't really address that. They just kind of got lucky, I guess, that it was a cloudy day on their wedding. Or... Yeah, well, it seems like yeah. Alice in the movie, she puts so many decor falling from yeah. the trees that it kind of hides the sun. And, true, and true, they're true. in the forest, too. True, true. Still, risky. Mm-hmm. And then she sees Edward's face for the first time. He's standing at the, at the... Altar. Altar. <laughs> He's standing at the altar, and it's cute. And then, as he met my odd gaze, he broke into a breathtaking smile of exultation. Cute. And suddenly, it was only the pressure of Charlie's hand on mine that kept me from sprinting headlong down the aisle. So, now she's excited. Mm-hmm. They talked about how they changed the vow to, instead of till death do us part, it's as long as we both shall live, which I feel like is still a cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. Synonym, because they are going to die eventually. Like, mm-hmm. the earth is not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. They say, I do. Then they kiss. He kissed me tenderly, adoringly. I forgot the crowd, the place, the time, the reason. Only remembering that he loved me, that, I, that he wanted me, that I was his. Oh, I hate this. So, they kiss. It's awesome. Everyone's cheering, happy. Her mother's arms. You know, it's just total bliss. And then the chapter ends. She says, One scorching hug stood out from all the others. Seth Clearwater had braved the throng of vampires to stand in for my lost werewolf friend. Like, oh my god, you just married Edward one second ago. Yeah. (laughs) Still standing at the altar. Why are you thinking about Jacob? Yeah. You're at your fucking wedding. Yeah. <laughs> like, why did that even cross your mind? Get over it. <laughs> that really pissed me off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's like, because I remember actually when I first got Breaking Dawn, I knew that Bella and Edward were, were engaged, but I remember actually, like, in the parking lot of Borders after I got it, reading the back of the book, it says, don't be afraid, we belong together. I was abruptly overwhelmed by the truth of my own words. Blah, 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 blah. Forever, he agreed. So I read that, and like, yeah, it's probably like 90% chance that that's Edward who yeah. says that. But I remember at the time being like, I don't know. Like, what if she does still end up with Jacob somehow? Yeah. And I wonder, I can't remember how I felt at the time, but even reading this, it's like, okay, she just married Edward. Are we supposed to think there's like a chance they could still end up together? Yeah, maybe. But we know at this point there are no big plot twists like that in this series. <laughs> Definitely would never shock us <laughs> wait you're saying there's no shocks in the whole twilight saga uh probably renesme it's probably yeah, the biggest. i mean but really what about when edward left was that a shock to you kind of oh uh, yeah maybe actually <laughs> maybe what do you guys think was the biggest shock for yeah. me i mean renesme i knew about it before i read yeah. it unfortunately so i never had the chance to be you like, did yeah I oh i think you told me no i didn't somehow i knew about it Take that back. Somehow, maybe from like start all forums. <laughs> <laughs> I think to me, actually, the biggest shock, especially, I mean, maybe just this 
time reading it for the podcast, the biggest shock was the end of Eclipse when they almost had sex. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? What? What's yeah. going on? What? But they don't, they don't actually. So it's kind of a half yeah. shock. Maybe for me, <laughs> when she thinks that her mom's in the ballet studio, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a shock. Yeah. That's a twist. Anyway. So the next chapter is called Gestures, chapter four. I thought it was funny on page 51. At the very beginning, it mm-hmm. says, it was just twilight over the river. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Seth and Edward hug on page 53 yeah people love this bromance as if in response to that thought Seth leaned towards Edward arms extended Edward returned the hug with his free arm Ah, and then Sue Clearwater shudders mm-hmm. yeah but Billy actually is surprisingly being very nice yeah I know well, alright <laughs> point for Billy yeah who was usually on our bad side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and it says Mike and Jessica are holding hands. Oh, I wonder what happened. Do you think we'll get a spinoff of Mike <laughs> and Jessica? No. Someone probably is writing that fan fiction. Maybe. That's cute. Yeah, Bella says, I hadn't heard that they were together again. That was nice. And then she moves on. Yeah. Yeah, her thoughts. Um, oh, Tanya hugs Edward. Yeah. Bella is so jealous about this. Yeah. I mean, you just married him. Come on. (laughs) He's your husband. (laughs) Your husband. So she hugs Edward, and then on its own line, its own paragraph, it's one sentence. It says, Tanya was still holding Edward. (laughs) So dramatic. (laughs) Ah, Edward, I missed you. That's so subtle. (laughs) I know. A good way to show. And she says, you look look well. (laughs) So do you. Bella's dying. And then he says, let me introduce you to my wife. Mm -hmm. Tanya, this is my Bella. So, he sets it straight. Yeah. I mean, she should know. Yeah. She's at their wedding. (laughs) (laughs) They do the traditional wedding stuff, like Mm -hmm. shoving cake into each other's mouths. It says, I threw my bouquet with atypical skill right into Angela's surprised hands. Mm -hmm. And Emma and Jasper howl with laughter at my blush while Edward removed my borrowed garter, which I'd shimmy down nearly to my ankle very carefully with his teeth. With a quick wink at me, he shot it straight into Mike Newton's face. That's crazy. That's so funny. Wasn't it necessary to do it with his teeth, or he's just being crazy? Do people I, usually do that? I think they actually usually do. Oh. But usually, How do I not know that? <laughs> usually they do it like, this one's actually way more... PG. I feel like usually yeah. they do it right from like the thigh down. Whoa. I mean, maybe not all the time. Maybe That's maybe... cool. <laughs> Actually, I feel like they do it more in, like when they're being cheeky about it, but I don't think it's like atypical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't get. So you, I know the bouquet is the tradition is you throw it backwards and the person who catches it is getting married next. Mm-hmm. But then is it the person who catches the garter has to put that on the person? Is it? Maybe. Yeah, because my friend Hannah, she (laughs) went to a wedding when she was like 10. She didn't know this. (laughs) So she fought someone to catch the bouquet. She was very aggressively going for it. And then she got the bouquet and then soon afterwards realized that that meant that the guy who caught the garter had to put it on her leg. But it was too inappropriate. So then they like just put it back on the bride or something. (laughs) <laughs> oh, she ruined it. Yeah. All their fun. Yeah. Oh my god, that's actually cool. Did they do that at the, like, at our cousin's weddings? I think so. I remember it at Julie's wedding. Hmm. I don't remember. But. <laughs> what the? I don't remember that for. And I just went to a wedding this summer. I don't think they did that. Yeah, it's definitely one of those traditions that I feel like. I want to do that. Find really awkward. <laughs> I would never want to be the one to catch the bouquet. I would feel super. <laughs> Wait, so that. does a guy have to put it on with his teeth, on the girl, or just puts it on? I don't know. You guys tell us. Yeah, <laughs> we could Google it. But... I haven't been to too many weddings. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's but cute. it's weird because Alice says, "I want that back." Yeah. So do they take the garter back from the person that they put it on? I don't know. I always got the sense that they just get to keep it. Maybe she wanted to catch the bouquet, but then why didn't she? Yeah, she could have if she wanted to. 
Guys, let us know. We're not experts here. <laughs> this happens every time. We're like, why? Why? And then we get a bunch then, of messages. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, she meant this. No, but I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. The second I read someone's message explaining something, I'm like, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one feels really ambiguous to me, though. I'm, I'm predicting nobody knows. No, I'm sure people know. <laughs> We've, we haven't been to too many weddings. No. No, I meant about the Alice thing. Oh, yeah. 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 But yeah, weddings, yeah, I've only been to a couple, so I need to know. Mm-hmm. Okay, I hate this part. I'm sorry to people who maybe like it, but Jacob shows up, mm-hmm. and Bella's like, Jacob, <laughs> and goes to see him in the shadows. He doesn't come actually into the wedding, which is a little cowardly in my mm-hmm. opinion, but whatever. And this is in the movie, too. He says... Kind is my middle name. So lame. Yeah. What are you, a square? Who says no, that? Yeah, and it's not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind is my middle name. He says, yeah, the best man finally made it. <laughs> and he calls her, he says, sorry I'm late, honey. Come I know. On. Who are you? I wrote that too. I said, Jacob calls her honey, ew. Yeah. Inappropriate. I don't like it, yeah. She's a married woman. Back off. I don't like, I also don't like when people say honey in a platonic way. I think it's so yeah. snobby. It is. It's always condescending. Yeah. I noticed, I don't know, I feel like this is a common thing with Bella and Jacob's relationship that annoys me, is that I wrote, Bella jokes and Jacob states the obvious. Mm-hmm. Let me try to find it on page 61. So, he says... I tell you, if I could get rid of the voices in my head, being a wolf would be about perfect. And she she laughs and says, "Yeah, I can't mind. I can't get mine to shut up either. In your case, that would mean you're insane. Of course, I already knew that you were insane. Like, duh, that's what she meant. Yeah, that's what the joke means. Yeah, is that she's you're insane? It too you didn't need literally. to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. To me, that just doesn't sound fun to hang out with. No. Him. <laughs> You need someone who's a step ahead. Who's like, ha ha, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and expands <laughs> upon that. Yeah. yeah. I was annoyed she says to us, I've never done anything good enough to deserve a friend like Jacob. Oh, mm, I know. You don't have many friends to go off of. <laughs> and yeah, you did. Why are you putting he, yourself down? Yeah, exactly. And like, also, he's not a good friend to you. He's not. I think it's odd. So then she's talking about how... She's not going to become a vampire just yet because she doesn't want to be writhing in pain for her honeymoon. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what's the point? It's not like you can have a real honeymoon. I'm just paraphrasing here. And she's like, yeah, I can have a real honeymoon. And he freaks out. Mm-hmm. I think it's weird that Jacob assumes that her and Edward cannot have sex. I don't know. Like, to me, it's not that yeah. obvious. Yeah. Maybe because I'm not in this world, but... Why do they even think that? Like, oh, there's yeah. no way they could have sex. I don't get it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they at least could do other things. <laughs> As Mel always means. <laughs> I mean, they could. I don't know why he thinks that right away. And I, I don't know, I hate how he freaks out. Mm-hmm. It's also just rude to say that. Very TMI. I said, yeah, and he, he gets super aggressive and is, like, holding her down and yelling at her. Mm-hmm. I read that I could never be friends with someone who didn't respect my choices the way that Jacob doesn't respect Bella's. Yeah. Like, I get that this is probably coming from a place of concern, but it's still not his place to say anything, to not even bring it up, you know? Mm-hmm. And he has no right to get upset about it. Yeah. I mean, at some point, I don't know, how would you feel if it was, like, I guess he thinks this is putting her life in danger. She might die. Mm-hmm. What if it's like your friend starts doing hard drugs or something? Like, then are you warranted to behave this way? Or at some point, you just have to be like, okay, there's nothing I can do. I think, yeah, in that situation, you would be. So maybe I can see where he's coming from. I think it complicates it that he also is very jealous and they have yeah. this history. And I think just anything related to like, yeah. sex and stuff it's just not his place to bring it's up it's not all. and also we know that edward is actually really good at controlling himself so it feels a little it feels especially over the top it is over the top but it mm-hmm. feels even more that like nothing even happens and edward has never yeah. hurt her when kissing her or anything yeah so. 
And yeah. it's really hypocritical, hypocritical because as he's saying this, he's squeezing her too tight and he's actually yeah. the one that's hurting her. Yeah. This is crazy. It says, um, Jacob's hands dropped to his sides and the sudden gush of blood through my waiting veins was almost painful. Mm -hmm. Like, what? He was holding her so tightly that it hurts when he lets go. It's just... <laughs> Jacob. Yeah. It's, I wrote it's scary and aggressive. And he shakes her. And she goes, oh, Jake, let go. Mm -hmm. Jake, stop. And I wrote in my notes, <laughs> I'm sorry, Team Jacob people. I'm, I love you still. But I wrote... Like, okay, yeah, okay, 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 okay. That's why I picked Edward. Yeah. <laughs> and then Seth jumps in and he says, You'll hurt her, let her go. I guess he whispered it, mm -hmm. but I thought that Seth is a lot more tough in the, in the books overall. Yeah, he's a lot he more is. boyish in the movies. Yeah, and he's actually supposed to be more tough and manly because don't they age up really quickly once they transform? Mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. a little unrealistic that he'd be so. You know, mm -hmm. kid like. Oh my god, I think it's crazy. Jacob says to Edward, I'll kill you. And then he <laughs> says, I'll kill you myself. I'll do it now. Yeah, at his wedding? <laughs> yeah. Please. In front of like her parents? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see you try. <laughs> oh my gosh, what if Jacob tried to kill Edward and then in self defense, Edward kills Jacob? <laughs> at the wedding. <laughs> The whole town sees it too. <laughs> <laughs> and then they all die because the Voltori gets mad that they gave away their <laughs> secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of a disaster. Jacob finally leaves. They go back on the dance floor. I kind of thought this was cute. Edward, it says, he closed his eyes and touched his forehead to mine. Jacob is right, he whispered. What am I thinking? He is not. Jacob is way too prejudiced to see anything clearly. And then Emmett wants to dance with her. Yeah. I, is that typical at weddings for the bride to dance with so many different people? Uh, I think maybe. They don't know the wedding etiquette. <laughs> so they're leaving for the wedding. Yeah. And um, she says goodbye to Renee, and then they drive off in the car. Which, again, is it typical for the just married cars to have <laughs> a thing of shoes on the back? Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was always cans. Oh, I think it can be either. I think okay. it was shoes or cans. Yeah, so it was shoes. Which, why? Where does that come from? I don't know. Old tradition we would have to read about. Yeah. But we didn't. <laughs> but it's all designer shoes, which I thought, like, Oh, my god. What gosh. a waste. And if I was at that wedding, I'd probably roll my eyes. <laughs> Alice. Yeah. I thought it was sweet. Bella says... The last image I registered was one of my parents. Phil had both arms wrapped tenderly around Renee. She had one arm tight around his waist, but had her hand free. Her free hand reached out to Charlie's. So many different kinds of love, harmonious in this one moment. It seemed a very hopeful picture to me, which was really sweet. Yeah, I think she's hoping there that she can be like that someday with Jacob. <laughs> oh. Wait, I didn't connect to that at all. Um, that's, I don't know. That's yeah, just what I saw it is. I don't like that. <laughs> my arm wrapped around Edward's waist, my other free hands touching Jacob. Jacob could never be Charlie. <laughs> no. Yeah, and then, once again, the end of the chapter, it ends with her thinking of Jacob because she hears a howling in the distance. The next chapter is Isle Esme. Yep. It starts with Belly going, Houston? Because they have a layover, which yeah. I would be so disappointed. Imagine if you read this and they actually just go to Houston. <laughs> For their honeymoon. For their honeymoon. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with Houston if you're from Houston. <laughs> I've never been there, but I'm sure it's fine. It's just weird. It's yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go to Rio de Janeiro, which feels random. But I guess it's all... Anywhere outside of Forks is random. I don't know. Yeah. I wonder why Stephanie picked it. Has she said? I don't know if she said. I guess that it's because of the Jesus statue. Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> or do you think it's because... Because she wrote this a little bit after Twilight initially had taken off. Do you think that Brazilian fans... Brazil fans! <laughs> maybe! We're so obsessed Got written into them. the book. Yeah. Because they're such big fans. Maybe. They arrive in the house on the island. Mm-hmm. And 
Bella says, or he says, it's a little hot in here. I thought that would be best, which I know is like that would be best for when they hook up, but like, why is he better? That kind of went over my head. I think, is it just because he's really cold? Um, maybe. And wants her to be comfortable? Oh, maybe. Yeah, because then later, remember when he leaves, she's mm-hmm. like sweating because he's not there to cool her off. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm hmm. I think it's interesting that in the book, unlike the movie, they don't stop really in the streets of Rio and they don't kiss or anything. We don't really get that. They just go straight to the boat. Mm-hmm. And also, that was funny that she said Edward was really skilled at driving the boat and got them to this island, even though he never mentioned boats before. Yeah. <laughs> just has like all these skills. But yeah, I find, I remember reading this for the first time and like it's just weird that it's in this setting. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with the setting itself, but it just doesn't feel like Twilight. Yeah. And it feels very odd to me. It's like, it's hot, it's this really nice house, mm-hmm. they have nothing to do. It just feels very slow all mm-hmm. of a sudden. Yeah. And it makes me feel a little weird. Yeah, it feels disjointed mm-hmm. from the story that you're familiar with. But there is a, so much build-up because there, there's a lot of nervous energy here. Like, even Edward's nervous. I was wondering, Edward said slowly, if first maybe you'd like to take a midnight swim with me. He took a deep breath and his tone was more at ease when he spoke again. The water will be very warm. This is the kind of beach you approve of. I'm surprised. I was surprised how, like, seductive he's act- acting. Kind of yeah. like he takes off his clothes and goes in the water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and before I get to that, I never understood. So she says, like, Bella goes in the bathroom and takes a shower. And freak- she's freaking out. She brushes her teeth and stuff. And she says, like, obviously I wouldn't put a swimsuit on. What should I wear? I never got that. It's like, you could put a swimsuit on yeah. and just go out there and then take it off. Yeah. She's I like, should I just wear a towel? No, that's ridiculous. Like, she can't figure out what to wear. Yeah, I don't get that either. Mm-hmm. Although, I think it's hot that she says, a small movement A small movement caught my eye. Yeah. Draped over a bend in one of the small palm trees that fringed the beach. The rest of his clothes were swaying in the light breeze. It's such a... He's naked! He's naked, and it's such a good image. <laughs> yeah. Because you're not actually seeing his naked body, but just seeing that alone... I know. ...is enough, it's and it's so exciting. Kind of crazy. I wrote... Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I like that it's subtle, and you it leaves it to your imagination, mm-hmm. but I wrote in my notes... <laughs> Why didn't she describe his butt walking into the yeah. water? Why? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Too excited. Why? Um, She's never below the belt. No. We never get a description below the belt. No. <laughs> we don't even get belly button. I don't, even, no. I don't want that, though. She's very self-conscious, though. Mm-hmm. She's, like, on the floor. She's almost, like, hyperventilating. Before she goes out. Before she goes out, which, I don't know, maybe that's relatable, maybe it's not. It's a little bit. I think it is. Um, I think it is somewhat, but this is her husband. I think it's relatable because they've kind of hyped it. I don't know, I think when you know you're going to have sex for the first time, it's kind of scary. But if they were, like, already kissing and she was in the moment, I don't think she would feel so self-conscious. But. It's weird that she's going to go walk out there. And do it. That's true. Yeah. Because he's already naked. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And they've talked about it so much. Because we're in those more, like, spur the moment Mm -hmm. scenes. She's Mm -hmm. ready for it. She gets out there, and she's naked, and um, (laughs) she drops her towel. And they're in the water together, and I like that she says, don't be afraid, we belong together. Just, like, very complete. I don't know. Yeah. And then he says, forever. And that's the part on the back of the book. Yes. Yeah. And then then it fades out. It says, the sun hot on the bare skin of my back woke me in the morning. And I wrote, are you kidding me? I know. Oh my. Just fade out. Fade in. I feel like I don't remember myself being this disappointed when I read it for the first time. I know. No, I remember actually. Skip. I was disappointed. Really? Oh my gosh. Like, I know you don't want to write an erotic scene, Stephanie, but you couldn't give us something? (laughs) It was even better in the movie. I know. Just something, at least, like, oh, our hips came together. Yeah. It's true. It feels 
Stephanie, I love you, but it feels a little bit lazy to be honest. <laughs> you just could have tried a little bit to yeah. write a PG-13 sex scene. I know. <laughs> so she wakes up. She's really happy. She's just lying there. His fingers are softly tracing the contours of her spine. And soon she realizes that he's in a bad mood. And I actually really liked the description she says, came to the realization of a different atmosphere outside my own glowing sphere of happiness. That does, I don't know, a good way to describe mm-hmm. it. When you're like in such a good mood and then you realize someone else is not, you're like, yeah. oh. But that was a more poetic way of saying it. Mm-hmm. Who's Max? She has all these bruises and he hurt Not himself. Her. Yeah. He hurt her more than she realized. Mm-hmm. I was saying this to Mel actually the other day. I was like, um... I get it, like, she's really bruised, but he's overreacting, like, yeah, bruises happen to humans, it's hot. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, some people, chill, Edward, if you're into that, some people do it on purpose, do it on purpose, yeah, if they're both consenting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, yeah. of course. But I do think it would yeah. be kind of bad if he oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't feel sorry. <laughs> At the same time. Like if yeah, like, that would be. But he oh. takes it so far. He says he's not going to touch her ever again. Yeah. Well, yeah. until she's a vampire. What? Yeah. Very overprotective. But and I think that that's, it's probably better that he's like that. Than, yeah, it is than true. the opposite. It's just so frustrating. Like, we didn't even get a description of the sex scene. And now yeah. we're being told that's the only time. Yeah. Which turns out not to be true. Yeah. But you're like, what? It is the only thing that we get that is really hot is when he says, I bit a pillow. Yeah. Because you have, you know, that amateur. That was so hot. There. And so that, again, leaves it to your imagination to think like, oh, like, when did he do that? He bit a pillow. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, Stephanie. <laughs> I know. That is pretty I, cool. Oh, gosh. If we could have seen that in the movie. Oh, my gosh. That would be hot. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to sign that petition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone commented, though, and said it's not possible for them to release unrated versions because it's not in Stephanie's contract, so Stephanie would have to agree to that. Shit. But come on, Stephanie. (laughs) Please. (laughs) Come on, Stephanie. (laughs) I also liked the description. So he's in a horrible mood. He's all upset. He'd probably be crying if he could. And she says, he was pulling my bright memory through the darkness, mm-hmm. staining it. And I, I, I thought that was a great way to describe it. I hate when that happens. When you, when you had, like, a great day, and then suddenly it just gets yeah. ruined by what's going on now. And, oh, and on page 91, I thought Edward was so emo. He says, you should be angry at me. Well, I am. Does that make you feel better? He sighed. No, I don't think anything could make me feel better now. Yeah. <laughs> So emo. But then Bella says, Bella's worried that he didn't enjoy himself. And so he says, no. And he says, I talked to Carla beforehand. (laughs) I wrote that too. What I could expect. Like, okay. You talked to your dad about having sex? He also talked to Jasper. I know. But like, come on. I just can't picture that. How did Edward even bring that up? up, Like, hey, so I want to. I know. I wrote that out. How did that go? So... Like, hey, Emmett, so I want to have sex with Bella. Yeah. How do he phrase it? I want to make love to Bella. Probably something Probably like that. Probably something like that. Or like, maybe like, Bella really wants us to have a normal honeymoon. Yeah, he probably didn't say it for Yeah. Better. Like, <laughs> we, we want to consummate our well, marriage. So, so he's basically <laughs> saying like, like, he's asking, will I get off on that, kind of? It seems like he's yeah. asking, like, what can I expect on my end? Like, how will that feel for me? Which is weird, because, like, doesn't Edward get horny at times? <laughs> like, shouldn't he know that he yeah. has a sex drive? And also he says, they told me it was a very great pleasure of Emma and Jasper. And maybe this is inappropriate for me to say, but, like, do vampires jerk off? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. That's a great question. Yeah. Like, has he never tried it? In his it's 100 years, years he's he'd never. probably consider it a sin. Come on, Edward. Yeah. He must have. That's In his hundreds of years. He's killed people <laughs> and he hasn't done that. <laughs> they said it's a wonderful pleasure. Yeah. Like, shouldn't you know or just have a feeling that it will be? Yeah, exactly. I mean, before he said that he wanted to. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hook up with her. Very innocent. 
innocent. Yeah, he's very innocent. Yeah. But Belle is not having it. Mm -hmm. She says, I'm going to try to wash it out like the feathers in her hair. Do you want to help me? Yeah. And he says, I'd better find some food for you. He said in a quiet voice, and he gently unwound my arms. I sighed as he disappeared, moving too fast. It looked like my honeymoon was over. The thought put a big lump in my throat, which is sad. She's been looking forward to this for so long. Mm -hmm. The chapter ends basically very similar to the movie. Mm -hmm. It's like, I will not make love with you again. I will not make love with you until you've been changed. Uh, I will never hurt you again. I hate the phrase make love. I know. (laughs) (laughs) It's so like 70s to me. Yeah, it's so (laughs) corny. How do you guys feel? Do you like it? (laughs) The safe thing to say always is sleep with. with. Yeah. Yeah. It's just casual. You want to be even more inconspicuous or vague by saying like hooked up. Hooked up, Hooked up sounds a little bit in, it sounds more Casual. juvenile or whatever, but it yeah. could mean anything, so. Yeah. Yeah. Or like when Harry met Sally, you went to bed with her? Oh, that's very <laughs> Went to <outdated>. bed. <laughs> I went to bed with her. And then I feel like saying <laughs> have sex feels like. It's in a textbook or something. Yeah, it's too clinical. Yeah. Or like, I had intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> I can picture Edward saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Ew, I hate it so much. <laughs> Edward, um, no. On Family Feud, they always say, make whoopee or something. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Chapter six is called Distractions. They're doing a lot of activities on the island. Edward's trying to wear her out. And it's described as her being really tired and eating a lot. Mm-hmm. And this is when I start to feel kind of disturbed i don't know i just don't like the first person narrative of her talking about being really hungry and eating so much food like Mm -hmm. more than she should and and like yeah i hate it really disturbs me yeah i I mean i guess it's kind of cool i think it's the only book i've ever read like that but Mm -hmm. it's very unsettling yeah and i i dislike the dreams listeners of the show will know that i dislike the dreams yeah and at this point always Way too much. I'm so sick of the dreams. And they're always about the child, the mm-hmm. immortal child. Yeah. It's very, very obvious. Edward, Edward still won't sleep with her, even though she's now trying on the lingerie and yeah. stuff. And I had a question. Mm-hmm. This is another not safe for work question. <laughs> Couldn't Bella be on top? Is like, that the thing that's being too dangerous? How would it be too dangerous? Would that be too dangerous? I don't what know. What would his the, dick I don't, do to her? Well, I don't know if it's his dick. <laughs> <laughs> but if she's on top, he could just lie there. And she and does And she just everything. does everything. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. <laughs> that's so true. Like, he could just not move. <laughs> yeah, because what is the thing that's causing her harm in this situation? Is it him being on top and just, like... It seems like, yeah, his arms and, like, just being on top. And just doing... Thrust. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, losing control. Hey, he could literally just lie there. And he doesn't have to do anything. That's true. Well, maybe when he... (laughs) When he... When he... Gesture. Finishes. That's, like, what... I'm so sorry to our younger listeners if you don't know anything about this. Just skip ahead. It's too late now. You have to, like, 14, I feel like... I know. it's fine, you're reading the book, so it's explicit, so we warned you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, like, in those moments he loses his mind, like, he bit the pillow, and so he said yeah. it's better than biting you, so maybe, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah so him... to lose control. Yeah, so maybe, like... Or he... so I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> He's losing his vampire control to not kill her, like, drink her blood, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Poor Another Ed- question we'd ask that <laughs> Stephanie, I like, can't Bella be on top. Yeah. What happens when that he climbs? So awkward. <laughs> She's like, um, I don't have answers she, for that. Yeah, she would. Leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely true though about losing control. I didn't even really think of that. I mean, how could I not have thought of that? I don't know, I guess this whole time I've been just like, oh, it's no big deal. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't d- listening to the warning signs. I guess I'm like Bella in that way. <laughs> Like my dad and <laughs> that's a quote. That's a quote. Yeah, from yeah. yeah. 
All right. So I like that Bella's now willing to, she says like 19, 20, what's the difference? She's down to go to college. Mm-hmm. I like that. And I, yeah, me too. I get this glimmer of hope, like, oh, that's the life they could have had. I wish. I know. That's another thing that makes the holiness make things so much worse. I know. I hope that they still do go to college someday mm-hmm. and pretend to be kind of normal undergrads, but mm-hmm. who knows. So she has that dream that they do make love, <laughs> and um, so then she wakes up, she's crying, she's really emotional, mm-hmm. and she tells Edward about it, and to her surprise, she says, but whatever the reason, he pulled my lips back to his, surrendering with a groan, and we begin mm. where my dream left off. So they do it, and no bruises, no new bruises this time, practice makes perfect. They do it. <laughs> I think it's crazy at the end of the chapter on page 117, sorry if this is jumping ahead, Mm -hmm. but Bella said, well, once again, she's been eating a ton, which I don't know why, it's just kind of, it's just weird, we've never had them talking about it like this, it's just Mm -hmm. odd, but then she says, I had another idea for burning calories, and what was that? And she says, well, there was an awful lot of headboard left, but I didn't finish, he'd already swept me up into his arms. And his lips silenced mine as he carried me with inhuman speed to the blue room. Oh, they like, do it again? Yeah. Like, he's totally changed now. Yeah. Now he's a horn dog. Yeah. I love a horny Edward. They're doing it. I think it's interesting on page 116. Mm-hmm. He says, is there something the matter with your heart? And then she says, nope, healthy as a horse. Which, I don't know if that's ever said in the books, but it's said in the movie that's a Charlie quote, yeah. and then they bring it back. But I remember in the scene in which Stephanie is writing Breaking Dawn Mm -hmm. in Twilight the movie. Oh yeah, that's when he says it. That's when he says it. So I'm wondering if she drew that from inspiration from the script. Maybe. I mean, maybe it's said in the earlier books, but I don't remember. I I feel like that's more of a movie line. That's cool. Mm -hmm. This is so weird of me, but I wrote in my... The last thing I wrote about this in my notes was... Cute that her and Edward share this intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. It is cute, though. Like, now they are, I mean, it is the next level in their relationship, mm-hmm. you know? They know each other even better now, so. Yeah. It's cute. They've graduated to a new level. Mm-hmm. One thing I didn't like, which I don't, I don't know if she's named here, but the cleaning woman. Oh, car? Yeah. I don't like how Bella describes her as the tiny coffee-skinned woman because I mm-hmm. feel like that's a such a cliche that people do when they don't want to say that someone has brown skin. It's always like chocolate skin or coffee skin or. What do you think would be better? Um, I think maybe just saying like the Brazilian woman and then mentioning like just like mm-hmm. letting the reader, like maybe by saying I'm I don't know, <laughs> I'm not a person of color so like maybe I can't speak to that but it's just always awkward to me when white writers say that it is it would certainly be weird and not very well written to be like brown skin yeah anyway that's the end of chapter six and now this is the last chapter of Mm -hmm. Bella's book book one and it's called unexpected yes and guess what it starts with a dream another dream great I (laughs) <laughs> first thing I wrote was I hate these dreams I'm so sick of them I know here's the Voltori <sighs> so over the top and I feel like there's just nothing even interesting about it <laughs> foreshadowing what's mm-hmm. gonna happen which is dumb because Bella's not even clairvoyant like <laughs> this would be inter- this would be make more sense if it was Alice as a human well I think it's supposed to be like a literary device but mm-hmm. it's just being done so much really hammering mm-hmm. into it like if it if it was not literally the Volturi and it was something else but that represents the Volturi if you read into it then that could be like a literary device but yeah. the fact that it is it's the Volturi. literally them it feels super lazy <laughs> yeah then again it is young adult so yeah. you know maybe foreshadowing is like kind of a new concept to some people and stuff so mm-hmm. Whatevs. So she wakes up and Edward isn't there and he leaves a note in his fancy cursive saying, I'm hoping you won't wake and notice my absence, but if you should, I'll be back very soon. I've just gone to the mainland to hunt, go back to sleep, and I'll be here when you wake again. I love you. Cute. 
But then she like kind of wakes up. She's walking around. She turns the lights on. And she makes chicken at 1 a.m. And it really grosses me out. Just the way it's described. Mm-hmm. I, I hate it. Yeah. I actually <laughs> never cook meat because I'm so afraid of. <laughs> I don't cooking. either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a baby. Yeah. I should get over every, that. Every... I've made fish before. Oh, really? I, I can only do beef. Especially this part. She says, suddenly the chicken and oil smell was revolting. I took the whole plate and shook it into the garbage. I guess that's kind of, I mean, it sounds simple, but kind of good writing on Stephanie's part. Because I really felt like, oh, yeah, I know what she's talking about. Yeah. Like, yuck. A lot of, I feel like I gotta give Stephanie credit. A lot of her descriptions are actually pretty good. And if I was in a workshop class, I'd be pretty impressed by them. Mm-hmm. It does make me feel mm-hmm. gross. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She gets sick. She's throwing up a lot. She thinks she has food poisoning from the chicken. And then she realizes that because she's going through her bag of toiletries and stuff and realizes that she doesn't have her period and it's five days late. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh. Mm -hmm. What? (laughs) I hate this. (laughs) And she's counting in her head, counting again. Um, Bella, he whispered urgently, I'm losing my mind here. And I think I might be pregnant. pregnant. Did she say that? <laughs> I think she says it to Carlisle. Oh, gosh. Yeah, she says it to Carlisle. So then when Car, is that her name? Mm. Car comes in. Or Car? Car, Car, I think it's maybe Car. Edward, like, says that they have legends about this kind of stuff, so he's, like, asking her about it in Portuguese. Mm-hmm. And... And then Bella also is triggered to a memory of when she first was researching vampires and saw a story like this. Mm-hmm. And so it is like something that people are a little bit familiar with. So how could that have never crossed any of the Collins' minds before this? Yeah. Like how was that not so, like one thing that Edward thought about? I don't know. I know. If Bella could find it on a Google search. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> You think he would have Googled it. They also thought it was a rumor. I don't know. Yeah, but still, I feel like Edward would have been better safe than sorry. Yeah, I think it's crazy. It's so awkward to me. She talks to Carlisle on the phone. Mm -hmm. She grabs her stomach, which is even worse than the movie, but... (sighs) I just hate this whole thing. Like, I... One thing I said is I feel like Stephanie puts too much of herself into Bella at this part because, you know, Stephanie, she's a mom with three kids. She knows mm-hmm. what this is like. And I'm not saying that, like, Bella doesn't already have this maternal instinct, but mm-hmm. it's just not believable. I feel like right away her narration completely changes. And she even says, she said, I'd never really understood Rosalie's pain and resentment before. I'd never imagined myself a mother. Never wanted that. It had been a piece of cake to promise Edward that I didn't care about giving up children for him because I truly didn't. Children in the abstract had never appealed to me. They seemed to be loud creatures, often dripping some form of goo. I'd never had much to do with them. When I dreamed of Renee providing me with a brother, I'd always imagined an older brother, someone to take care of me rather than the other way around. And then she said, Maybe I just had a really bad imagination. Maybe that was why I'd never been able to imagine that I would like being married until after I was I already was. Unable to see that I would want a baby until after one was already coming. And just the thing I hate about that is like a lot of times when women don't want babies, people will always say to them, you just don't know. Or when when you will have kids, you'll change your mind. Or like you just Mm -hmm. don't know what you want right now. Or like it'll hit you. And sometimes maybe that's the truth. But like I wish that we more could just believe women that that's not what they want. And that's not every woman's destiny and it just feels too well I don't get what the point was of making Bella like even feel that way like why not just make her be like yeah I don't I'm I'm willing to give that up like because I love you so much like not not making her someone who was against having kids like that's Mm -hmm. what makes it feel out of character but if she was someone who's just kind of neutral about it it wouldn't be that weird yeah I do think that she loves Edward so much I mean he's like her world that having his kid like how could she not be kind of excited about that like I think that she's thinking about like Mm -hmm. oh baby Edward she pictures it as a boy and it's just I don't know I think that that might be kind of why. Yeah. Also, like, she is married to him now, and everything's just kind of going fine, so 
I'm not really surprised that she takes it well. I don't know. It's not that I want her to be against it. I just wish it never happened. Mm -hmm. Because I, it gives in to the idea that there's no happy ending unless the woman gets married and has a baby. Like, I think that it would have been mm -hmm. more unique and it would have made more sense if that just didn't happen. Mm. What I don't get is I don't understand why Renezme is supposed to... Which, spoiler, that's the daughter that they have. But um, why does she age like a dog? Like, why is this sped up? Mm -hmm. Because um, I'm not sure how long pregnancy is for, like, dogs or cats. I'm actually not sure. But <laughs> it's kind of like that. Like, the pregnancy is short. And then, just like a dog, you know, they're only a puppy for a little bit. And then they're fully grown pretty soon. And then they stay that way for, like, forever until, like they're, I don't know, 12 or something, they start mm -hmm. to get, like, gray hair. So, like, why, I don't get why it has to be like that. Like, why is she, eight, why is she having this accelerated pregnancy where she's already having morning sickness and stuff? Mm -hmm. And then when Esme grows really fast, like, why? I feel like just to fit it all, she's <laughs> not doing a time jump. But it doesn't I make sense. So. I don't like it. It's weird, yeah. That's the crazy thing is they're still on the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And she's already... That's, the, I, that's I think, another thing that makes mm -hmm. it so cringy. <laughs> Edward's freaking out. He's, mm -hmm. like, in shock. And he wants to, like, get rid of it. I thought it was interesting that... So this is the end of the chapter, kind of jumping ahead, but he forgot that the cleaning service people were showing up again and he leaves his phone just like on the table mm -hmm. so Bella is able to take it but um it's very unlike him to forget things to forget that Gustavo was coming to leave his phone lying there he was so stressed he was barely himself I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. and sort of relatable but <laughs> yeah yeah sure it's a tentative little nudge in my womb oh it's so <laughs> awkward <laughs> Yeah, it just turns into... Yeah. Well, then we're not really in Bella's point of view anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's just so much different. Mm -hmm. I will say, I feel like this is... There's probably tons of others, but the only first-person book I've read about pregnancy, I think. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I shared this in our first episode, but if you're just joining us, or if you haven't listened to that one, when I read this for the first time... Yeah. I was 12 years old and I um for some strange reason I was also a virgin uh, surprisingly at 12 <laughs> for some reason I was like starting to convince myself that I was pregnant for my <laughs> but, like I feel so guilty like <laughs> yeah I feel so not innocent anymore yeah. I don't know why I don't know if you guys ever experienced Did anyone that else Feel that? It was weird. <laughs> I don't think that happened to me. Yeah, it was, I was I getting that, though. too into Bella's head. Yeah, so it ends. She calls Rosalie and says, Rosalie, it's Bella. Please, you have to help me. I don't know That's the end. how to say this without opening a can of worms, but one thing I wrote, which we talked in our feminism mm -hmm. episode, is like another thing I don't like about this story is just the idea that this could be a pro-life story or like I don't think of it that way mm -hmm. but just the idea that like a lot of people see it as that's an agenda it's pushing and but like wasn't that their problem yeah it's their problem <laughs> but like I just hate like putting such a polarizing polarizing thing like into the story mm -hmm. not about her being pregnant but then Edward's like let's get get rid of it and then yeah. her like no I don't want to and mm -hmm. it's this child I want to have it and like it just yeah it feels like a little bit you could interpret it as like it's pushing a message I guess so yeah um and I just don't want that in Twilight <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah what do you guys think let us know but yeah that's the end of Bella's book it's interesting weird <laughs> we have this whole wedding and it's i don't know the plot isn't really going anywhere i mean yeah. i guess you're looking forward to the wedding and stuff and then now suddenly we have this going on so how do you feel about the book so far um i i it just does feel so much different from the others i so far don't enjoy it as much as the other ones yeah me neither yeah 
And I'm not looking forward to reading Jacob's part as much. Yeah, and I don't feel as like in, it's weird because this is their honeymoon and stuff but i don't feel as excited about the sex scenes as i did mm -hmm. for the scenes in eclipse like those scenes i was freaking out for and this i'm not really although i think the first time i read it it was but yeah i don't know breaking dawn what a weird book so next part we'll read jacob's mm -hmm. part of the book part two and now in honor of our one year anniversary we are going to answer some questions that we received mm -hmm. just about us and i guess we're gonna reflect on the podcast and stuff but okay this first one is not a question <laughs> uh nothing to ask just wanted just would like to tell you the i, <laughs> I can't talk nothing to ask just i would like to tell you I loved the Robson episode. Love from India. That's sweet. I had a dream That's the sweet. other night that... I love that um, episode too, not to yeah, take my own door. <laughs> I had a dream the other night that um, for some reason in a meeting we were doing an example about research and like my boss said, oh, like it'd be like if you researched something like Robson. <laughs> and I was like, what? I kind of like Robson, Robin Kristen, and... It took me a while to realize it was just a dream when I woke up. <laughs> that could totally happen. Someone said, what is your favorite pastime? I don't know. I feel like we've said discussed before we have so many hobbies. Yeah, I have so many hobbies. My favorite pastime is walking around the city listening to music. That's yeah. my favorite pastime. I don't know. I Growing up, I really loved dance, but I haven't done it much in a few years. Mm -hmm. Probably writing. It's what I went to school for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Writing and then making collages. <laughs> Those are my faves. We also got... <laughs> this is just about us. Like, yeah. I hope... I don't know if anyone's interested, but... Favorite food, favorite restaurant, favorite beverage, favorite dessert. Um, That's hard. Favorite food is hard. Favorite restaurant easy Chipotle. Oh, what? <laughs> no way. I wish I could say something somewhere nicer, mm -hmm. but... I, like, literally, I just smell Chipotle, and I crave it constantly. Favorite restaurant's hard. Mm, favorite food? Honestly, I love avocado toast. That sounds so mm. classic millennial, but... Favorite food? Mine would probably be mac and cheese. Mm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Favorite, favorite beverage? beverage? Um, if I could drink anything, well, probably wine. But, like, a yeah. non-alcoholic. Oh, cider for me. Um, I love, I don't drink it much anymore, but orange soda. Mm, mm hmm I'd say a hard cider, if we're talking hard stuff, or a cafe mocha. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite dessert? I like it just a good, good brownie. <laughs> I love brownies, too. Yeah, it's probably a I really gooey I brownie. I think I prefer it to cake. Chocolate yeah. chip brownie. I love brownies. I, li I do like cake, too. I'm I, I'm a sweets person. I could go on and on. I love a Nutella crepe or something. Or ice cream. Okay, I have to stop. All time favorite movie scene in the Twilight Saga. Favorite movie scene. Mine's probably when they're in the forest when he tells her that he's a vampire and he's yelling. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mine. Probably the prom. Mm -hmm. Classic. And then favorite book scene? Probably one of the almost sex scenes in Eclipse. <laughs> yeah, mine is in near the very end in the meadow. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Oh, or I love in New Moon when Edward says oh. that he almost was going to come back. Yeah, I love that too. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, what did you think of the engagement ring that Edward gave Bella in the movie? I think this might have been before our fashion episode, but... Not a like fan. <laughs> If you could be any character in Twilight, who would you be? If I could be, like, what does this mean? Hmm, I feel like I would be Bella. Like, <laughs> yeah, same. But if it wasn't in that context, mm -hmm. hmm, probably still Bella. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want any of that. I wouldn't want to see the future. Mm -hmm. I think that her power is, like, very powerful, but it's also... Oh, I should... I actually... Though I don't like her, I said the other day I realized I feel like Renesme would actually be the most the best character to be because you could sleep and you could eat but you get the best of both worlds that's true that's true so 
I don't want to date Jacob, though. Yeah, me neither. But <laughs> you don't have to. It's yeah, not like that. don't have to, yeah. You could be a Ooh. brother, a protector. <laughs> friend. Whatever she wants you to be. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, Jacob, you're my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is your favorite book on your bookshelf? doesn't have to be a saga book. Okay, if it's not the Twilight books, I think I would say maybe... I don't know. That's hard, actually. I love The Secret History. Maybe yeah. Call Me By Your Name. Oh, really? That's a really good book. Or... I haven't read it in years, but I loved the book Prep by Curtis Settenfeld. Oh. What about you, Mel? Um, well, I don't have a bookshelf right now. It's something you want to get, but... In your book collection. In my collection, probably something I read recently, like a year ago, would be a book called Darren Greatly by Brene Brown, which, like, completely changed my life, and it turned me on to self-help books, which before I always thought was kind of silly. Self-help rocks. Yeah, it's so, (laughs) it's so, so good. Um, I highly recommend it. And I also, just like a classic, would probably be Catcher in the Rye. Mm, that's really good. Oh, yeah. And probably like some Jane Austen. But, okay. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be just one book. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think you'll get over Twilight as much as you did? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I'll get over Twilight. <laughs> I, think, I think that maybe someday I won't be like thinking about it as much. But mm-hmm. I'm always going to love it. Yeah. I mean, I go through, when I was in college, I really didn't. Because there was nothing new coming out. Yeah. I didn't think about it as much. I remember one time one of my friends said to me, I don't think you're really into Twilight anymore. It's just something oh, you used to love. I hate that. Which, actually, it's not true. And it's definitely doing this podcast made me more into it again. Well, now also that there's the festival. Like, mm-hmm. if we kept going to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would never end. I don't think I'll ever outgrow it. And you know what? I actually don't really outgrow things that often I mean obviously things I liked when I was a kid me neither like obsessed with me but they neither. always even like little things like tv shows I liked when I was yeah. five they always mean something to me like I yeah. can never love something and then just completely fall out of love with it I get a little like embarrassed sometimes because I don't know a lot of people I think think you're into something and then you're over it and Mm -hmm. especially with music I still really like a lot of bands that people consider like over but I still Mm -hmm. consider them my favorites yeah like MGMT for instance Mm -hmm. like that it's hype was kind of around when Twilight was out and they still make music I think they still make good music but people are like oh I didn't know that they were still like oh that was like in 2008 yeah but people usually don't follow and keep things so I mean there's some things that interests I've had like when we were kids we loved Avril Lavigne I don't follow yeah. her new music anymore yeah. but her old music will still always mean so much to me mm-hmm. I really feel that way about everything is there any hope of another film or a chance of a reunion we actually get asses all, all the, time. the time we don't know we yeah. <laughs> I think that there could be another book yeah eventually she's I, talked about it but yeah I don't think that there will ever be another movie in the series that has this cast. I think that there could be a adaptation of it with completely different actors, but a new movie as people would want it, that ship has sailed. Yeah, I agree. You'd have to have the book written and then mm-hmm. you'd have to have all the characters on board mm-hmm. and they're getting older. Yeah. Reunion, like maybe someday they'll do a thing where the whole cast gets together, but... And like- Jimmy Kimmel or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or for an Entertainment Weekly photo shoot or something. But I don't know. I don't even think that would happen soon. I yeah. Favorite movie besides Twilight? Probably When Harry Met Sally. Oh, yeah. That's probably my <laughs> favorite, too. And then I would say Heather's. Second. Third, technically, after Twilight. Mm-hmm. Favorite Colin besides Bella and Edward? Mel? What do you think? I don't know if I have one. Probably Alice. Mm. Maybe Alice. Maybe Jasper. Mm-hmm. Probably Jasper. I love Jasper and Alice a lot, mm-hmm. but honestly, I think it's Carlisle. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Carlisle, I don't doesn't really do it for me as much as it does for you. Mm-hmm. He's a little boring, but I don't know. I think he's just such a great guy. Yeah. And so well-spoken. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I want to know... 
I want to see him put his guard down. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, the thing is, he's too well-spoken. Yeah. He's too yeah. experienced. Like, for me, <laughs> I would feel really intimidated by that. I want someone a little bit younger, a little bit, like, learning <laughs> things with me for the first time. I don't think you're going to get that with the Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Um, will you guys ever do an episode on the wolves? Yeah, I think so. We should. Yeah. I definitely want to do one on the real Kuliu tribe. We I talked about the wolves like a little bit over the episodes, but yeah, we should. To go, I want to do an imprinting episode. Oh, well. yeah. And if you have anything in particular that you always think about when it comes to the wolves or just anything, let us know. Have you met Stephanie or any of the cast in person? We've never met Stephanie. And just recently we met, you know, Alex Mraz and <laughs> Christopher Heyerdahl and Eric Odom, who play, in order, Paul, Marcus, and Peter. We met them at the festival, but besides that, we never have met anybody. Yeah. Yeah, we're not that cool. <laughs> what do you wish was explored more in the series, either visually or in the text? That is a amazing question that is an amazing question i wish the text had more descriptions of the mountains and how beautiful forks is because when we went there i felt like it wasn't done justice in the books Mm -hmm. in the movies i wish that there was more of edward's playful side yeah me too side Um, i wish in both of them but probably more the books just because you have more space i wish there was more I don't know, just more about Edward's interests specifically, and like, I wish, I don't know, it'd be cool if she read a page Mm -hmm. of his journal when he was looking, or, I don't know, I just think his room is so interesting, and he seems like such a complex guy. Mm -hmm. We get some of it, but it's just never enough to me. Yeah. I wish, too, that Bella had a more in-depth background. Yeah, I wish that was explored more, too. Would you guys want to do an episode rating other vampire books, movies, slash TV shows? I've actually yeah. never consumed any other vampire media. Well, now you have to. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I was thinking about doing that, having an episode about other vampire stuff. And I was even thinking, like, we could read... We would only do one episode about it. We wouldn't do, like, part one, part two, blah, yeah. blah. We could read, like, Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights oh, and yeah, stuff like so that fun. and, like, compare it. I think yeah. that would be cool. But I have thought about... I do like vampire stuff, and I think that would be cool to talk about. Yeah. I actually always go on the Vampire Wikipedia page. I don't know why. (laughs) They have this amazing chart. It's huge, and it's basically, like, everything ever. Like, they have Twilight. They have, like, Dracula. Just everything, even, like, video games, whatever. Anything that has vampires. And then it says, like, do they get – do they burn in the sun? Yes, no. Like, can they impregnate – can they have children? Do they live forever? Are they beautiful? Like, it's like every trait possible. Oh, that's cool. Is, on, are the Twilight vampires on there? Yeah, yeah. Twilight's on there. Love it. Um, like, literally everything's on it, and wow. it's on Wikipedia. It's just fun to that's look at. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> Kudos to the person who made that. I know. <laughs> you always think that it's, like, a, just an entity doing it, but it's probably just one person. I know. Um, I actually, people always recommend vampire stuff to me all the time, especially, mm-hmm. like, True Blood or Vampire mm-hmm. Diaries. And I've always been intrigued, but at the same time, I don't know if I'm into vampires themselves mm-hmm. or if I'm just into Twilight. So I mm-hmm. definitely have to check it out and then see, because mm-hmm. I, I don't know either way. I like vampires in general. I think mm-hmm. pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> the biting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's your favorite character of the pack? Um, probably Leah Clearwater. Yeah, yeah, me too. Probably Leah then Seth. Seth. Emery's nice. Yeah, Emery's nice. Yeah. I like Paul in the movies just because he's so over the top yeah, and memorable. Yeah, because Alex, too. And that's our favorite scene. Um, <laughs> Quill's fine. Yeah. Jared's probably the one that's, like, I'm so indifferent about. Yeah, we don't really get told much about Jared's personality. Mm-hmm. Besides that he imprints on that girl, Kim, right? Yeah. Oh, and he's a dick about it. Yeah. F, yeah. F- Jared. Yeah. Who is your favorite character? Edward. Yeah, Edward. We <laughs> have more. Someone else said, who is your favorite character? Edward. Edward, yeah. What's the worst experience you've had with a hater of Twilight? Ooh, good question. Um, I feel like you've had some bad ones. Have I? Actually, the other day at work, I don't know if I should say this in case anyone's listening, but so we were 
out um, apple picking. We were all sitting at a table and we were talking about Harry Potter and one of my coworkers actually said, oh, I was never really into Harry Potter. I was more into Twilight. And my other coworkers reacted in a way that in which I was like oh my gosh I can't believe someone else is saying this yeah my other co-workers were like oh twilight like they were kind of yeah. laughing at it and I, f- I felt bad for my co-worker I was like oh my gosh I love twilight too and then afterwards I told her I had a podcast about it but that made me feel awkward mm. I'm trying to think of other I have a story yeah I'm sure you were like to this I I know you've had stories like this in, like, high school and college, but Mm -hmm. in college, it wasn't, like, people being, actually, yes, they were being haters. Uh, In my writing class, my professor, her way of teaching us editing was to hand out pages from Twilight, and we were going to mark it up and condense it. Oh, that's so bad. And I was, like, horrified, because I love Twilight, and the whole room was just shitting on it, and was like, huh, this is so stupid, oh my god, this is horrible, and I kept being like, hey, like, it's not Oh my god, that's like, it's so young adult. bad. I'm like, that was me out the so whole much. table is that that's the way the classroom was set up. It was just shitting on it the whole period. Mm-hmm. And and that's like, it's like, yeah. who knows if people actually feel that way or if they're being taught no. to feel that way. And I couldn't speak up because then that just makes me look dumb because mm-hmm. everyone's saying, oh, this is dumb. And then if I said, no, I like it. Yeah, it was hard for me. I actually remembered when I was looking for jobs straight out of college, mm-hmm. I applied for this uh, children's publishing company, mm-hmm. I think, and we had to submit a writing sample, so I submitted a think piece I wrote the previous semester that was about how I loved Twilight, and it was just like a 600-word think piece, and it went over really well in my class, and I thought it was just like a good piece of writing. Mm-hmm. So I submitted that, and I didn't expect anything back, and then I got a six-paragraph rejection letter about oh my how God. I would never be taken seriously in publishing and about how like and the girl was like I like Twilight too but you just don't want to talk about that and it was just oh my God. saying like it was really unprofessional for me to submit that and I thought like well I feel like it makes sense like it's children's publishing it's a young adult book mm-hmm. it was super I, like I'd never received a rejection letter like that before and that person had to like spend so much time on it yeah that's crazy oh, oh no yeah it honestly made me want to cry it was like just very not necessary wow did you ever send that anywhere again or no <sighs> I don't think I did. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have to su- submit too many writing samples. Yeah. So she said, no one's going to take you seriously if you're walking around an office and talking about young adult series all day. And I just responded and said, like, I appreciate your advice, but obviously I would never walk around just talking about young adult series all yeah. day. Like, she totally just took it the wrong way. And, I mean, it's fair, like, Rejection is a part of life and a part mm-hmm. of applying for jobs, but not necessary. You just didn't even have to respond. Yeah, most people don't respond. Mm-hmm. Poor little Mel. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was bothering her that day? <laughs> this is a good question. How do you think the rules slash dynamics of werewolves would change in the life and death universe where presumably all the werewolves would be women? <gasps> That's oh, shit. so interesting. Well, we haven't read Life and Death yet. <laughs> we haven't read it, and I think the thing that... We will. We, but I don't think we'll learn because no. it's just Twilight, and like the whole imprinting thing isn't explored no, no, in the no, first no. book. But what do you think? Mm-hmm. If you had to... I don't know. Maybe... I think Stephanie would make a point to not change the imprinting. Yeah. But I think that it would be conveyed in such a different way. I mean... When a mm. woman is, like, more into a guy, you know, they get the reputation that they're clingy or that they're... Yeah. And, like, that's what Jared's girlfriend got when she just had a simple crush on him before yeah. he imprinted. So, I think that it'd be interesting to see how the other characters react to it. Mm-hmm. I wonder, like, I don't know, now it's all women running around naked and stuff. Oh, yeah, and true. I wonder... Not to get too into it, like, do they still get their periods? <laughs> the moon cycles? Oh, yeah. No, I know that they don't actually have anything to do and with And are the men, the men just doing all the chores and waiting? Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> Is Paul just, like, making muffins? 
I do think it's interesting how, like, the wolves get really, really big and bulky mm-hmm. because they're transforming, but it doesn't seem like that happens for Leah. That's true. Maybe she gets muscular. Yeah. We just aren't told. Twilight, New Moon, reread type episode about Midnight Sun. Will we do that? Yeah, We definitely. will. Oh my god, I can't I wait. I can't wait. I'm just trying to get through this to get to that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that will be so good. Yeah, I can't wait. I wish I could print it out. Maybe I can. It'll be a lot of paper, but... Yeah, I don't know if that's legal. <laughs> <laughs> I just shrugged. <laughs> Who was your favorite character of the Twilight Saga? Why? Oh, it's Edward. Edward, yeah. Also, love your podcast so much. Thank you! That's from Wolf <laughs> Enthusiast. How did Billy and Charlie become friends? I... We're not sure. <laughs> Maybe it's in the guide. I think it's in the guide. I said to Mel, she thought this was crazy. What do you guys think? I think that Mel and I should read the whole guide and talk about what, what struck us as interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I probably, you were like, I, I the whole thing. Well, I probably did when I first received it. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just going to make something up. I feel like that they just, you know, it's a small area, small towns. They both like to fish. I feel like they just met. Mm-hmm. Maybe they saw each other a few times at the beach or something and became friends. And also, he's the policeman, so. Yeah. Maybe... Mm. I saw him around town and I don't I know. I feel like I know it's in the guide. Is it because, like, something with Charlie's parents, like, being older and... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. So thank you guys for asking us questions. I hope that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, too. <laughs> We've never done something like that before, but let us know if you would want us to do it again or if you hated it. Then we <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for this whole year yeah. of fun and... Oh, I want Laughter. to share Mia's message in response to our episode oh, yeah, last yeah. time about the festival. So we were, like, speculating a lot about the different cosplayers. At the um, Tully Forever as, and Forks Festival. Yes, that we went to about a month ago now. Mm-hmm. And so she had some inside scoop. I hope it's okay to share this. But she said that Edward is actually one of the most into it, that he's been doing it since 2010 and says he'll do it. Until he's a grandpa, Edward, because he loves it and loves Twilight so much. Which Aww. is really so sweet. We didn't get to spend as much time with him. I feel bad that we were like, I don't know if he was into it. Yeah, because we didn't know. <laughs> she said, Jacob got Emma into it, and weirdly enough, not only does he like Twilight, he's family friends with Kel and Lutz, which that's what? super cool. That is cool. I wonder what, what coincidence. Kellen thinks about it. Kellen probably loves it. <laughs> Everything we heard about Kellen was so positive. What if one year he couldn't do it and so he got Kellen to do it? Kellen to do it? <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Kellen's not even there as a special guest actor. He's there as the character himself. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. Oh my god. <laughs> she said it was Carlisle's first year and Esme was reserved so they were still hiding so they were still finding their way together weirdly he was supposed to be carlisle years ago and actively asked our jasper about joining the cast but it was never it had never worked out until this year Mm. how did they find out about this i guess this is just a world that i don't know about yeah hmm well yeah so our last episode, we were definitely wrong about some people thinking that they weren't that into it or whatever. So, I apologize. Yeah. I'm really <laughs> sorry. Our last episode, I feel like, was so candid. Almost a little bit too candid. It was so candid. <laughs> we, it, it's one of my favorite episodes, actually. It's like actually. a reality show. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't... I feel like I just got lost in the conversation. Didn't think about the fact that we were being recorded and going <laughs> to share that with people. <laughs> I thought about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you had to edit it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just say whatever and hope that Kelly cuts out parts where I look bad. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah, thank you for this whole past year. It's been so much fun. And thanks for celebrating our birthday with us. Yeah. We'll be back soon to continue talking about Breaking Dawn. Mm-hmm. So tell us what you think. Yes. And if you're reading it along with us, um, share your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Or if you're not, share your thoughts. Yeah. If you've yeah. never read it before, you can still share your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> and let us know if you disagree with us, too. Yeah. We don't want to be 
Mm-hmm. What do they call it? Echo chamber. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you guys. See Peace. you next time. Bye. Best of luck. Next two weeks. You got this. <laughs>